The phrase, golden age of cinema, conjures up images of brooding leading men and glamorous Hollywood actresses. But the era was also an outrageous time of Hollywood cougars and scandalous seductresses, female movie stars who did what they wanted when they wanted, and were seemingly immune to the gossip their affairs stirred up. We start off with the iconic Elizabeth Taylor. Famous for her unique beauty and dramatic talents, Elizabeth Taylor was also known for being one of the most notorious seductresses in Hollywood. Her most scandalous moment came when she hooked up with singer Eddie Fisher, who was then married to her best friend, Debbie Reynolds. Taylor and Fisher later wed, but ultimately divorced. Years later, Taylor apologized to Reynolds, and the two reconciled and became friends again. Throughout the course of her life, Taylor had seven husbands, though she married the love of her life, actor Richard Burton, twice. After divorcing her final spouse, construction worker Larry Fortensky, in 1996, she apparently decided she'd had enough of men and remained single until her death in 2011. At number two, we have Vivian Lee. Best known for bringing both Scarlett O'Hara and Blanche Dubois to life, Vivian Lee was also known for her intensity and her beauty. But success and her notoriously volatile marriage to Sir Laurence Olivier didn't come easily or ethically. According to one of the many documentaries made about her, Lee went to see Laurence Olivier in a play and declared, that's the man I'm going to marry. And a friend of hers who was with her had to point out, well, actually, you're already married. But this was all part of this ruthless ambition. People were to be cast by the wayside in those early days until she achieved what she really wanted. Olivier, too, was already married, but that didn't stop Lee from following him and his wife to where they were vacationing in Capri. Lee and Olivier hooked up, despite the fact that his spouse, actress Jill Esmond, was pregnant. The less than virtuous Olivier gave her the boot and married Lee soon after. The rebellious Tallulah Bankhead is the next vixen on our list. Beautiful, rebellious, witty, and not afraid to occasionally alienate people by speaking her mind, Tallulah Bankhead was a one-of-a-kind sex symbol. Actor-writer Emlyn Williams described her voice as steeped as deep in sex as the human voice can go without drowning, and her appetites were legion. One of many memorable anecdotes as recounted by The New Yorker involved a second-rank actor named John Emery, whom Tallulah had picked up on the summer circuit and rather casually married. Emery was good-looking, capable, and amiable. Best of all, he bore a marked resemblance to John Barrymore, and not only in profile. Years earlier, when Barrymore revealed himself to her in his dressing room, Tallulah had sworn to herself, and anyone within earshot, never to sleep with any man who wasn't hung like Barrymore, and went on to claim that she had stuck to her word, since she also claimed 500 or more conquests, perhaps she wasn't always so picky. One of Tallulah's party tricks was to escort guests to the master bedroom, fling back the covers from the bed in which Emery was sleeping, and crow, did you ever see a prick as big as that before? We now move on to the next seductress on our list, the iconic Jane Mansfield. Next to Mae West, Jane Mansfield is probably more associated with racy and fabulous good times than any other actress in Hollywood history. The blonde bombshell had countless lovers and erotic romps, was known to do auditions in bed, and was even rumored to have been a mistress of JFK. But her most notorious association was with Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan. According to sources, Mansfield was not above tormenting the obsessed Satanist. Mansfield, who made no secret of her many affairs, denied knowing Levy intimately, according to his publicist, Mansfield would ridicule her satanic suitor by calling from her Los Angeles home and seductively teasing him while her friends listened in on the conversation. Larvey's public claims that he had an affair with Mansfield began only after Mansfield's death in an automobile accident, 
which he also claimed was the result of a curse he had placed on her lover, Sam Brody. If you're enjoying this video so far, please like this video and remember to subscribe. It helps us immensely. Now back to the video, where we will look at Daisy and Violet Hilton. Conjoined twins Daisy and Violet Hilton are likely best known for starring in Todd Browning's cult masterpiece, Freaks, and Henry L. Fraser's exploitation flick, Chained for Life. However, they actually made many movies and rose to fame during the heyday of the 1920s and 30s vaudeville scene. Pretty, vivacious, and alluring, the twins, who were joined at the lower back and spine, allegedly had dozens of affairs. They were supposedly welcomed by A-list America and promptly embraced all its hedonistic pleasures, partying hard, and even taking a string of lovers. They also married, divorced, and had a baby. Being conjoined, they had no physical privacy, so Harry Houdini taught them how to mentally tune each other out when necessary or needed, a skill, as the piece points out, that they would later use to great effect in the bedroom. Their first of several affairs was apparently with a married friend whose wife named them as correspondents in her divorce proceedings. Daisy later sought to marry musician Jack Lewis, but he eventually left her after 21 states refused to grant him a marriage license, technically because wedding Daisy and her sister would have counted as bigamy. The twins were to a large extent victims of their time and of Hollywood. After they became too old to work in showbiz, they descended into poverty and eventually died under tragic circumstances. Lupe Velez, known as the Mexican Spitfire, is next on our list. Velez dated actor Gary Cooper for many years and called him the love of her life. But she was jealous of him and accused him of having an affair with actor Anderson Lawler, among other people. According to some stories, she supposedly unzipped Cooper's pants at social gatherings to sniff at his crotch, claiming that she smelled Lawler's cologne. Known for her unbridled exhibitionism, Velez was rumored to have had hundreds of lovers, and to have routinely participated in bawdy acts like lifting her dress above her head to reveal her habitual refusal to wear underwear. However, most of these reports were probably exaggerated. Velez was said to have deliberately encouraged gossip. From the Mexican Spitfire, we now turn to the iconic Louise Brooks, who had an extraordinarily brief but impactful film career. She hated Hollywood, seeking instead to build a haven, as this Pop Matters piece memorably puts it, out of sex, books, and gin. Brooks did, however, like to have a good time. She left her first husband, director Eddie Sutherland, after she fell in love with George Preston Marshall, owner of the Washington Redskins. She then left Marshall to marry someone else, whom she then left after less than six months. Brooks also had many lovers, including, for a night, Greta Garbo, and frequently posed nude. It was all short-lived, though. Brooks's life in film was over by the time she was 26. But though her subsequent poverty caused a lot of problems, she never really regretted leaving the limelight. Up next is the bombshell Diana Dawes. With her ostentatious mansion, kitschy decadence, and debauched parties, British cult actress Diana Dawes was the definition of notorious. Dawes was married three times, had numerous lovers, and was rather quaintly called a wayward hussy by the Archbishop of Canterbury. She was famous not just for starring in low-budget films, but for filming people doing the deed in her house. According to sources, to whoops and laughter, Dawes' guests watched grainy footage transmitted via video link of an unsuspecting couple who had chosen to cavort in one of the dimly lit upstairs bedrooms. It's fair to say that pretty much anything was acceptable during the infamous sex parties staged at Orchard Manor in Sunningdale, Berkshire. 